We've got another article, uh, and this one's going to be part of a segment called Deja News. Deja News. Now, this might have been something that you guys talked about before before I was on the show. A long uh, time ago. This comes to us from TechCrunch. It says, U.S. government launches the Cyber Trust Mark, its long-awaited IoT security labeling program. So, I guess, if this is Deja News, so this has been in the works for a while. It absolutely has, yep. For, it feels like forever ago, mm-hmm. we talked about this when the government, the U.S. government, let's clarify, uh, set forth with an initiative saying they wanted to to stick a label on IoT devices. It, and we have reported on IoT devices for a long time because they typically have very, very poor security. So the, uh, the government announced what they were going to try and do was come up with a labeling program. Much like when you buy food products here in the U.S., you can look at the label and see how many calories they have, what is a serving size, what vitamins and nutrients they do or do not have, and more importantly, how many trans fats are in there so you know mm. if it tastes good or not. That's right. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it gluten-free? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, so we have food labeling like that. They said, well, why don't we come up with an IoT label? A lot of challenges to that. It's right? hard to, it's hard to like, figure out how many trans fats are in an IoT device. Th- there is, yep. Yeah, it's really but uh, how, how do you quantify security? I mean, you can't like put on the sticker, like, how many zero days are present in this device? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how zero days work. I need a number, sir. What's the percent daily value of zero days yes. in this product? Listen, we are the United States government, and this is how it works. <laughs> so uh, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and blah, Technology. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, NIST, which is a, uh, actually a great, great organization. Yeah. They put out a lot of free standards that you can use and save some time with. Uh, but NIST put out a series of guidelines for IoT security, and they have – basically used these guidelines to establish what is going to be called Trustmark, this label that can be found on the uh, IoT devices, or it's the cyber Trustmark. Uh, now, I was curious what this label was going to look like, so they finally came out and made the announcement. They said, this is it, we're launching, here it is. You know what the label looks like? Energy Star compliant. <laughs> it looks like a QR code. Does it really? And at first, yeah, yeah. Is it a QR code? It's a QR code. It is a QR code. It is. It doesn't look like a QR code. It, well, it yeah, is like a one. QR code. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a QR code. Sorry, I will I will retract my prior statement. <laughs> uh, Senator Pazette, <laughs> when you said it looks like a QR code, <laughs> I don't know why I became a Southern gentleman. Uh, for some Colonel reason, Sanders on the all, other side of, the all table. of my lawyers and whatnot are. I know it looks like murder, yeah. but... Uh, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> not murder. <laughs> so when I first heard about this, I thought, well, wait a minute, that's, that's a good idea, right? So you can, you can scan this QR code. And it will take you not to the vendor's webpage. It will take you to a NIST registered page, one managed by the government, where it identifies, here's the steps you need to take to secure the device. If you need to update firmware, here's where you go to get it. Here's the most recent patches for the device. And if a vendor wants to participate in this program, because it's totally optional, if a vendor wants to participate in this program, they have to register with the, the government to be able to have one of these pages on their device. And I thought, all right, well, that, that's a good way to go about it, right? The the vendor has to be committed. Mm-hmm. And if I am at the store and I'm looking at two wireless access points and one has a cyber trust mark code on it and one doesn't, I would, if I didn't know the brands, I would probably lean towards the one that had the, the code, right? This ain't like one of those Tommy Boy kind of scenarios where if you want me to take a dump in a box and label it guaranteed... <laughs> I've got the time. But at the end of the day, all you have is a guaranteed piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, my world is movies. You know that, right? <laughs> like, I always want to quote Tommy Boy with the, uh, uh, you know, if I want an opinion on a steak, I could. Oh, cut a bull's horns off or something like that. Like yeah. a, get the butcher to stick his head up a bull's butt or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember the quote, That's though. Right. It, it's a, it's too that, complex man. for me. But, uh, but in this case, I started thinking about it more. And I was like, wait a minute. How can we totally subvert this program, right? What's the problem with QR codes? Is you can't tell what they do until you scan it. As a human, you have no idea what it is until you scan it. So You just put a QR code on your box I, well, or on maybe, the device, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. What's to say like you, know, you and me create some kind of prank funny page order a whole thing of sticker sheets, go down to Best Buy and just walk down the aisle putting yes. our stickers over or, it. Or, yeah, right, over the sticker, right? Yeah. And yeah. then putting, like, bad stickers on the ones that don't have one, making you think they're good. And then people <laughs> think, like, oh, you know, I, this device must be secure. Let me scan it. Oh, I just got a drive-by on my phone. Yeah, and right. 
I'm now less secure. Yes. So I I appreciate what they're trying to do, right? Get, create a registered web page that identifies the security credentials of the device. But I think that QR codes create their own risk. They do. So I I, I don't know that this is the right solution. I, I would agree with you on that. I think it's long been agreed upon that QR codes because of the innate uh, inability for them to kind of let you know what's happening. Now, our QR scanners kind of tell us what's ha happening now a lot of times, right? They say, There'll hey, do you wish to go to this link? Yeah. This is the link. But if you're using something like a Bitly link or whatever, you can't tell what that is anyway. You yeah. know, Apple. Yeah. Apple is generally regarded as, regarded, regarded? I can say it, as, yeah. uh, oh, shoot, I don't have my phone on me. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to test it real quick. I'm pretty certain that if I go to a QR code and I pull up the iPhone camera yeah. and, and look at it, it will show the QR code and then it'll say like open in edge. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell me the URL. Oh, really? I don't, no, I don't my, know. I think my oh, Android here. phone does. <laughs> Sophie just volunteered her phone. Um, oh, no, it's not true. So this one just showed Wikipedia. This one Did it do it? shows App Store. All right. So this, yeah, okay. this, all right, th this is working. I'm is remembering working. this okay, wrong. Excellent. Then. Okay. Well, that's why we test these things. So this is also an old domain. phone. So yeah. maybe there's been an update. Yeah. The update is, no, you don't need to see that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it's none of your business. Calm the hell down over there. All right. Well, QR codes sure are convenient, Yeah. but they're easily exploitable. Uh, yeah, we'll have to see. But I kudos to them for at least trying. Yeah. Right? It's better than nothing. And Amen. what I hope to see is that IoT vendors out there willingly participate in this program. I wonder how many of our tests are.